my name is Kathy Wojak. Um, this is my brother, Gary. Um, uh, Gary lived at a uh, intermediate care facility uh, in the state of Ohio. Uh, he was born uh, in April of 1956, um, and uh, he had a diagnosis of fragile X syndrome. Um, and also there were some autistic characteristics that went along um, with the syndrome. I also want to put in as a disclaimer, I guess, if you will, um, that I worked for one of the county boards of developmental disabilities in Ohio um, for almost oh, 36 years. Um, I was a development, um, I first started off as an intervention specialist in the classroom and worked with a variety of, of children primarily who uh, were medically fragile and had also some significant um, intellectual disabilities. Um, and then I became a developmental specialist working with children birth to age three in the home. And then the last half of my career, I spent in administration, uh, managing the early childhood special ed program, home-based program, as well as um, providing consultations to school districts um, and families and things like that for uh, preschoolers and other young children with autism and related disabilities. So um, certainly, you know, have a background. Um, obviously, I was Gary's sister, my most important role in life. And I was also his um, legal guardian. Um, obviously, I had to make all the decisions for Gary. He was unable uh, to make any of those choices or decisions for himself in terms of medical care and health and safety um, and things like that. It was very difficult to brush his teeth. Um, dental care was challenging. He usually had to be sedated in order for the, um, the doctor or the dentist rather uh, to perform any type of general exam with x-rays and stuff like that. Probably since COVID um, started and he did have COVID, but it was a very mild case. But he really started to have some issues with feeding and swallowing, more significant issues with feeding and swallowing. Um, he was refusing a lot of meals and losing weight. Um, at that time, um, he, he was he would at least drink the insurer. So he was um, he they would offer him things to eat, and then uh, if he wouldn't eat, he would drink the insurer or milk, as he called it. He did like his pop and coffee, so that was um, that was sort of my way of knowing if he was really sick or not, if he refused pop or coffee, and I guess I should probably add french fries, um, then I, I knew that that he was, you know, that that he was sick. On the, on the morning on November 16th, uh, they, they called me and said that Gary wasn't feeling well um, and that he was hitting himself a lot his ear, um, and he had had several ear infections ever since the bout of pneumonia. So the doctor was coming in in the afternoon for his normal visit to, to the facility, um, and um, they, they were going to have the doctor check him. So after the doctor checked him, they called me and said that um, he, the doctor prescribed um, an antibiotic, I had asked, you know, did he eat anything? Did he drink anything? And they said, no, he really wasn't eating or drinking. They were asking him to eat, you know, and offering him foods. But he was refusing. Later that evening, I don't know, it must have been around 6 o'clock, I received a call um, and, and said that Gary had died. Um from what I remember of that evening and what I remember of the phone call was that um, they said that he was sitting in a chair and he got up and started to run and then, you know, collapsed and died. And then a little bit later on, I found out that they said that he had peanut butter in his mouth. And at first I thought, well, you know, that's kind of odd because Gary didn't eat peanut butter. And I thought, well, maybe they gave him his pill, the antibiotic with peanut butter, because Gary needed, you had to give him like either pudding or applesauce or something like that with his pills. He wouldn't, you couldn't just hand him a pill and he would swallow it. So much happened so quickly 
that night that I, I didn't process all the information until maybe like a week later when I got the death certificate. And I saw that, in fact, um, his cause of death was choking from a peanut butter sandwich. The speech therapist also, after he did the initial feeding of that, kind of told me that, you know, he was relying on the direct support staff and other staff to give him reports on how Gary was doing and he didn't hear anything. It my point, you know, once again, there was just such a lack of communication between the related service person and myself. But I also want to say it was a lack of communication between him and and the direct support personnel. So if you're, you're so if you're watching this video as part of a training, I beg of you, whether you're a direct support person, whether you're a nurse, whether you're a related service person. If something doesn't feel right, or if you question something, if you don't don't think it's right, please, 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 you you you, you should be feel comfortable enough to say, I don't think this person should have peanut butter and jelly. So I think the purpose, once again, of my pleading and making this video that um, we all need to be aware that um, feeding and swallowing should come very natural. I mean, it's a natural process. It ha you and I do it every day without any problems. But the individuals that we work with because of underlying syndromes, because of medical issues because of aging, all kinds of things, um, that feeding and, feeding, feeding and eating and, and, and swallowing is much more of a challenge for them, uh, and we need to be aware of that. So um, anyways, you know, once again, you know, this is my brother. I want his, I'm, I always wanted his life to be valued. He taught me so much. I would not be the person I am today, nor would I have had the life. I mean, he just, in every way, shape, and form, he was my hero. And I don't want his death to be in vain either. I, I don't want another family to have to experience what I went through. So I hope that my talking about this as difficult as it was for me to do, uh, that you will take this message and remember that um, what you do is important and your communication with each other and with family members um, is important. Together, we can increase communication among all team members about choking and swallowing concerns. Encourage people to speak up if something doesn't feel right. Address specific choking risks in the person's plan, including harder to eat items like peanut butter, hot dogs, etc. Advocate for swallowing evaluations to be completed. Have critical conversations with physicians and other medical professionals about dietary and swallowing concerns. Prevent choking incidents. Save lives.